So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, I must apologise, my presentation isn't here. So, I'm afraid I'm going to have to describe a little bit what was on the slides, which you would have seen, and also to make some commentaries about them. So, basically, I'm going to present some of the main points from last year's work carried out by Alzheimer Europe's Ethics Working Group on the ethical issues linked to the way that dementia and people with dementia are portrayed and perceived. And now? Oh, like that? Is that better? Oh, okay. No? Here? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> so basically, um, this presentation is about the way that dementia and people with dementia are perceived and portrayed. And it's based on e Alzheimer Europe's um, ethics working group. So we carried out an extensive review of the literature relating to the way that people with dementia and dementia are portrayed by various groups in society. For example, the general public, uh, people from the perceptions of the general public, people with dementia and informal carers, health and social care professionals, and, and several different groups, which you would have seen on the slide. Um, now this is a bit difficult because I want to explain to you um, the, the way that we went about the ethical reflection. So we wanted to explore the ethical implications for people with dementia who have, or, and also people with dementia in the future, of the ways that they are perceived and portrayed in a particular way. But we wanted to adopt a non-judgmental approach in a sense, we didn't want to state it was good or bad to perceive dementia in a people with dementia in a certain way, but rather to, um, to suggest what might be the implications for people with dementia of such perceptions and portrayals. And so oh, we, did, we, we didn't focus on, for example, the biomedical ethical principles such as autonomy, justice and equity, beneficence and non-maleficence, but more of a care ethics approach. So, there was a whole range of issues. I'll just uh, give you a few examples. For example, relationships, dignity, privacy, stigmatization, individuality, the lived experience, a whole range of issues which are important for the lives of people with dementia and their carers. Thank you. That was the slide. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, with regard, we, so re regarding the origin or cause of dementia as perceived by various groups in society, on this slide you can see the various ways of perceiving dementia, but this, the li these lists of um, different perceptions are not exclusive in the sense that somebody could, for example, perceive dementia as a mental disorder but also as being influenced by spiritual forces, or somebody might think that it's a contagious but also a curable condition. So there are a whole, a whole range of different ways of perceiving dementia. And so I just want to take a, f a few of them, just to give you, for example, with regard to dementia as being perceived as a natural part of aging, a mental disorder or a biomedical condition. So associating dementia with natural aging or a mental disorder means that there's also a possibility of creating a link to the stigma of being old, ageism, and of having a mental disorder. The normalization of, of dementia as part of, of aging may prevent people with dementia from seeking timely diagnosis and therefore from accessing relevant services and supports which may be available and which are adapted to their needs, but at the, a, more, a, a more global um, level, also to the development of such support and the distribution of funds for care, treatment and research. And so this is very much an, an issue of equity. But also recognizing dementia as a biomedical condition for some people adds a kind of legitimacy to the condition and the feeling that one has a right to demand appropriate support, having a recognized medical condition as do many people. So there's, all, there's nevertheless also a risk of the over-medicalization of dementia and of losing sight of the actual person. So here we have the perceptions of the nature and experience of dementia, which in some way reflect perceptions of what it means to be a person. So for example, there's a perception that dementia involves a loss of personhood, and that this is further explained by the following perceptions, which reflect a mind-body split, where it's believed that the mind is separate from the body, and it's possible to have a mind with no body. So there are several ethical implications of, of perceiving perceptions linked to this mind-body split. 
So, for example, the social exclusion and isolation and the fear of this kind of loss of self. There's also a risk of devaluation and of perceived loss of personhood as greater um, value is attributed to the, to the mind compared to the body. But the perception that a person's mind has gone, or in some cases has been so radically transformed that it's no longer the same person, may have an impact on relationships and on the perceived uh, duty to care, which has implications for well-being, but also for survival. But on the other hand, um, for some carers, this may actually be a coping strategy to help them to remain motivated to provide care, especially in the case of behavior which they find challenging because they can then disassociate from the person that they love and who, to whom they're providing care. But there are also implications for the use of advanced directives and hence for the respect for autonomy because there may, some people may question the validity of an advanced directive based on the radical change that they perceive between the person who wrote the directive and when it actually comes into use. So this slide provides examples of some of the characteristics frequently associated with dementia, which when applied in a blanket fashion, for example, the, the list on the right-hand side, can be considered as stereotypes and therefore contribute towards stigma. There are also stereotypes about the, the way people with dementia look. And so this, this first quote, I've heard people say, you don't look like you've got dementia, or fan fancy that, how are we supposed to look? But also at having a range of symptoms which are more typical of the advanced stage of dementia. And so this second quote is from a GP in the UK, who said a typical stereotype is someone in a rest home, just uh, not doing anything, sat there looking gormless, when you start talking about dementia, that's the image people have, and they kind of miss out the years before that. And so just to, to zoom in on a couple of these characteristics, vulnerability and dependency, this stereotype of advanced dementia is also linked to the, to the perception that people with dementia are vulnerable and dependent, and I mean this in a, in a global way. And this detracts from the potential vulnerability of all human beings and of interdependency because we're all dependent on each other in different ways throughout the course of our lives, not just in relation to care. There's also a risk of situating people with dementia as the problem and then of further stereotyping, adding additional attributes, for example, of, of being weak, needy, powerless and lacking capacity. And again, I mean this in the global sense. Such perceptions may also reinforce paternalism thus leading to overprotection, loss of freedom, in some cases abuse, and the right to exercise autonomy being threatened. And in some cases, this can lead to the premature loss of capacity. So I won't dwell on this slide too much because it's already been very well explained, well, very well developed by <laughs> So for one person, uh, um, a word or metaphor might express hope or help them to cope, whereas for another, it sums up dread and loss of self. And some words and metaphors are used very liberally and paint a very biased picture of dementia. Sometimes others are avoided, considered demeaning, depersonalizing, and insulting. But some metaphors become so common that we're unaware, we may even be unaware of the, the links to the original me meaning, for example, with the fighting terminology and of the possible negative connotations. And it can even be difficult sometimes to avoid use expressing ourselves in this way because the metaphors are so deeply embedded in our use of language. So this is about frames and counter frames and the work of Van Gorp and Verkuse. So they suggest that the media uses frames to offer a certain perspective to audiences and to the general public. Frames are described as socially shared organizing principles, and I quote here, which offer a perspective, a view of reality, but at the expense of other possible angles, which disappear from the line of vis field of vision. So the frames draw on values, metaphors, and images, which are part of the taken for granted, socially constructed knowledge about how the world functions, and which enable people to process complex, raw experience into more comprehensive patterns, which are thus more manageable. And so they're often too obvious to be challenged. So counter frames, as you see on the right, and th these are just an example from this particular study, they're not set in stone. And for example, we might question the natural aging one. 
But counterframes are not aimed at replacing the frame, but rather at offering an alternative perspective which is more nuanced, but also a credible and comprehensive alternative to the general public. The impact of the language and other forms of communication surrounding dementia is considerable and reflection on the possible ethical implications suggests that albeit with a few exceptions, there are very few expressions which can be considered, uh, considered as wholly good or wholly bad in every situation. So we need to increase awareness of the many different ways of looking at dementia and to emphasize that dementia is not only a medical condition but a complex social phenomenon. And the way we look at dementia differs from one person to the next and according to the situation or context. So our ethical reflection focused on ways in which various ways of perceiving and portraying dementia were likely to be potentially um, harmful or beneficial to people with dementia. It, going back to that first slide, which I'm afraid you didn't see very well, in terms of their dignity, well-being, autonomy, rights, personhood, relationships, and their actual role in society. So the working group decided not to write recommendations, and we, were, we did receive one criticism for not doing this, but rather to develop guidelines aimed at provoking reflection. And we need to ensure that people with dementia remain an integral part of our social world and society, and that their views are valued. So we need to reflect on and question the ways that we perceive and portray people with dementia. And if you look, uh, go into the Alzheimer Europe website, you'll actually be able to to access the, the whole report and at the end you will see the various guidelines on, on reflecting on the way that people with dementia are perceived and portrayed. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>